Brooks, we're going to give you 14 idea fragments. You don't have to use everything. You don't have to use all of them. You can throw any of them away except one. And we want to see how far you can get into the process while taking us through your process the best you can. And for those of you watching, if you want to play along at home, great, please do the same. And we welcome you to pause the video and see what you can come up with and compare your ideas to a professional writer. Okay, are we ready? I'm ready. Okay, screenwriters on your marks. So here we go, 14 idea fragments. Single mom. Single mom. $500,000. 500K. A train. A train. Memory loss. Memory loss. What? Oh, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> <No joke. laughs> A small town in Michigan. Small town, Michigan. Okay. The power of silence. Power of silence. A yellow bag. Yellow bag. A man with a checkered coat. Man with a checkered coat. Two friends who haven't seen each other in 20 years. Two friends who haven't seen each other in 20 years. An abandoned castle. An abandoned castle. Butchered that spelling of abandoned. That's fine. <laughs> okay. A life-threatening dare. A life-threatening dare. A mismatched pair of detectives. A mismatched pair of detectives. Rebirth. Rebirth. And lastly, mm -hmm. this piece of dialogue. Okay. They don't realize how powerful I am. They don't realize how powerful I am. Cool. Okay, great. So the first thing um, I'm thinking about is um, what spoke to me. Like what, when I go down these prompts, it's like, what is it? Um, where, where do I feel like I might have a personal take on something, right? Single mom, um, my mom was single, so that I feel something. 500K is a significant amount of money, um, maybe. I mean, it's sort of, you know, heists and crass and it's sort of material and maybe. Train is a great location, certainly a big history in um, cinema history of trains or strangers on a train or... Um, lots of different. I actually wrote a. The first screenplay that I wrote was a, a passenger uh, that I that I sold was uh, uh, commuters on the L train in Chicago getting trapped in the blizzard uh, during an alien invasion. So, um, but I can't do that. I already wrote that one. So um, that's that. Memory loss um, is certainly interesting, um, but not so much to me. I'm going to put that one aside. Um, small town, Michigan. Okay, maybe. Um, certainly, I spent some time in the Midwest, so that's possible, but probably more toward the end of the list. Doesn't I, I'm more called to a train, and then you later have a location with the, um, the castle, an abandoned castle, which is kind of interesting. Um, I visited England once and um, went to see uh, a castle, and that it was it's interesting. It's, what's nice about that is it's an elevated location. It's sort of just a, it could be a warehouse, right? But it's you know has this history and um, and it has all these metaphorical powers to it. So maybe there's something there. Um, the power of silence. That's interesting. Um, one of the things that makes cinema powerful is um, you can just watch what people are doing, and you can um, it can it can hit you on a deep level. Uh, Scorsese said. Uh, once someplace that I really appreciated, he he would sometimes watch his own films if they came on TV or whatever, and he turned the sound off and just kind of watch his, his shot selection, which is a really good way to focus on your subtext. What are the characters doing? What do they want? Um, also, it's a great way to make sure the scene construction is, is muscular and powerful. Um, if you had the sound off, um, could you see what the conflict was and what are they doing? So. Um, yeah, so there's something there. It certainly lends itself well. A yellow bag. Um, I mean, that was going to be used to pull over somebody's head to kill them. Uh, okay, otherwise, 
don't feel connected to that. Man with a checkered coat, that sounds like something um, potentially could be in some sort of detective piece or whatever. I'm not that cold about that. Two friends who haven't seen each other in 20 years, um, I am all over that. Um, I had deep relationships with people I went to high school with um, and childhood too. And I think that's probably pretty common, but there was the, the I, I, um, in, in NYU, my senior thesis film was about me. Uh, was based on when I took my girlfriend home to my hometown and I had really close relationships with my guy friends and I kind of got myself in a situation to be choosing between my girlfriend and my guy friend and ended up winning a screenwriting award there. Um, so that's, um, to me, that's the most loaded and interesting idea of, of everything so far, right? And who knows, maybe this is two single moms who haven't seen each other in a long time. And maybe they're on a train and maybe they're gonna rob the train for $500,000. <laughs> yeah, terrible idea, but anyway, that's just, um, that's not where I'm going. But um, single moms haven't seen each other in 20 years. I mean, I'm not a single mom, so I wouldn't go too far into that as my protagonist, probably. Um, I can, I write women. <laughs> they're half of the people, on, they're half the characters in all my screenplays, so I can. Um, but like these days, me being a white straight male, um, writing a single mom driven movie is, you know, there's resistance there. Um, and it's, it's other people's story. So um, uh, the son of a single mom, I, that, that I get, that's personal to me. Um, but this, these two friends who haven't seen each other 20 years, they meet on a train, is definitely something that is speaking to me. Let's see, single mom, maybe, um, I'm not sure, maybe one of them is traveling with their single mom, that feels personal to me. Um, and maybe they're going to see this abandoned castle in London, right? Or outside of London. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking these elements and I'm connecting to um, things that have happened in my life that I could bring out authenticity with. I could um, make them something that, it's like, my, what's my personal way in? When I write with this one writing partner, um, you know, his superpower is sort of creativity and inventiveness and he loves sci-fi and fantasy. My superpower is grounded characters, pers the grounded personal characters, and I write tension that's really thick, um, generally in dramas or thrillers. So when I write with him, it's like, where's the double filter? Where, what do we both um, like? What do we both speak to? So, um, uh, and so sometimes when we're looking at fragments, it's sort of, you know, when he and I are maybe brainstorming new concepts, or when I brainstorm myself, I kind of take fragment ideas and I kind of start, and if he and I, I guess the reason I brought it up is if he and I are disagreeing about something, he like kind of likes something, I go, yeah, but I don't have any personal connection to it. Um, and then we go, okay, fine, we'll go to the next one, or vice versa. So that's what I'm looking for here when I'm seeing these fragment ideas. It's like, well, what's my, what's my personal connection to it? Um, if I'm in a general meeting with a producer or something, and they're like, I got this book, and we're thinking about bringing in a writer to adapt it or whatever, um, I go, great, let me hear it. And I'm looking for some sort of connection because... Um, I can make it sing when I'm writing about this dude I went to high school with who fascinates me. You know, that, that's really what I'm writing about and I'm just sort of doing it in this certain way that kind of connects, so. Um, okay, a life-threatening dare. Um, probably not, a dare doesn't interest me. Um, putting that at the bottom of the list. Um, next to yellow bag, which I won't use. A mismatched pair of detectives. Well, that's sort of, if I was, working with like a producer who was like, I want to do a movie and it's got to have a mismatched pair of detectives. <laughs> uh, all right, I might, you know, it's part of the, you know, like maybe these two friends, they meet on the train, they haven't seen each other in 20 years and something terrible happens on the train, maybe it, it stops in the middle of the woods or something and um, they have to be a mismatched pair of detectives to figure out what the hell happened. Um, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, there's two things I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to say what, what is it that I can bring something to from my perspective on life? Um, and then how do these elements sort of piece that together? But the key is not to force it, right? A mismatched pair, you know, in that element in general, mismatched pair detective feels a little, you know, a little forced to me. Um, but it can be really fascinating because detectives are interesting if you're doing any sort of mystery story. And mismatch is always good because you know, we all have poles inside of us, part of us that's this and part of us that's that. And, you know, any sort of 
the buddy love story, what Blake Snyder would call, has p these two different characters learning from each other. So maybe, you know, these detectives are puzzle pieces that need to learn how to f fit together. So that's possible. Um, that's possible. Rebirth, I mean, that's kind of a theme. Um, uh, sure. Um, you know, we all have rebirths times, but I wouldn't really force a theme that much at this point, I don't think. Man with a checker coat, we're back to, and then um, they don't realize how powerful I am. Um, I mean, there's definitely some juice there. You could do something with that line in a certain way. Um, um, it's kind of a heartbreaking way to take it if you, um, if the character really doesn't believe it. Um, the character is in this place of going, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, whatever, um, and says, they don't realize how powerful I am, but doesn't mean it at all. You know, um, the subtext of that is really beautiful and heartbreaking. And that would maybe, um, yeah, anyway. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's so, you know, that's, that's a little bit, about 10 minutes. So this is how I would approach it. So I'm kind of, I basically um, reorganized the list and put the ones that were like, the ones that I had some sort of connection to more towards the top and towards the bottom. And for the hypothetical, if I was going to go for, further, I would just, you know, at first, you know, I mean, that's not how it works. I mean, what will work in the business is they'll say, I've got this story and maybe it has some of these elements. Um, I mean, it might, you know, it might, there might be some sort of novel that has those sort of elements, but this is sort of missing the narrative drive or something. So, um, which is, tends to be more the core part of a story, which is why if somebody would option a book or something. Um, but like, um, does that answer your question in terms of how I would think about these things? In terms of putting them into a story, like if you were to take some of these pieces, mm -hmm. um, whether you use just one, what if you just, all you did was was build it around the two friends who hadn't seen each other in 20 years. Okay. You just said, okay, I'm going to take that. And you know that that resonates with you because you have close relationships with people from your hometown. Yeah. And so okay. you can so, go somewhere. So you want me to come up with a concept uh, based on um, one of these pieces? Sure. And if one, if one, and if you say, you know what, actually, this yellow bag, what if one of them finds 500000 in a yellow bag? Mm -hmm. And now they have a moral dilemma. Yeah. Do I turn it in? What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, I'll pitch an idea that um, these two friends are on a train and they haven't seen each other in um, 20 years. And... Um, um, maybe they had a history of some some bad things back in high school that they did. Maybe not too bad, but like some trouble. Um, and one guy's desperate, and he's got an, uh, an opportunity to steal five hundred thousand dollars from X, right? So, um, and he hasn't seen this guy in twenty years, and he knows at least back the way he was before that like. This guy is, is the perfect guy. It's almost like Strangers in a Train, which is the premise there of the Hitchcock story was, um, I'll do your murder, you do my murder, and that way we have no alibi and, and we're, both, um, we're both more likely to get away with it. So maybe I would pitch this as a spin on that, but it's not, um, I mean, Hitchcock was great, but he also had a very kind of, you know, bulk, boxy sort of stiff, you know, performances and kind of, you know, it was just older, different, different time. Um, but if it was like a um, yeah a modern story, two friends that haven't seen each other, and this one guy's already has this heist in mind, um, and desperately needs his five hundred dollars, and runs into this friend and is like, oh my god, this guy's the perfect guy to do it. And then what's what's the blocking agent? Why is um, is it the guy? You know, um, like maybe even like maybe one guy's a dirty cop. Right, so one guy's a dirty cop, and and the guy that sees him is now a criminal, and maybe he's trying to recruit one guy's trying to recruit the other for some sort of heist or something. Um, these guys are best friends in high school, and um, so what we're, what I'm doing is I'm I'm sort of pitting sort of deeper personal elements in a way that f could feel kind of personal. Not that I've ever robbed anything or anything like that, but like um, loyalties among friends and taking some sort of risk for a heist experience is pretty. Compelling. I like high stories. I like I like crime stories. So um, yeah. So I could see that as sort of a. I mean, it's kind of a low, low. Uh, you know, there's high concept. There's low concept. Um, 
but you know, it's it's okay. It's it's interesting. So if you were to so if, if let's say that's the story. So let's say um, I'll write a log line out of it. When when two friends two they were not kind of, what kind of friends they were um, outsiders. They were um, two kind of <laughs> down and out friends. One's a cop. Maybe we call it down and out friends. Um, one cop and one crook who haven't seen each other in 20 years um, meet on a train. Um, they decide to team up to steal $500,000, right? So that's functional. Um, but like, so that's like, and that's actually where a lot of sort of beginning writers might stop, right? Okay, they do it. And then the, but the problem is if you don't go any further with that concept, um, it's just flat. It's sort of like, I mean, you have to, that dialogue would have to be phenomenal and crackling and amazing. Um, so what really makes this better as a concept is, well, who are these friends? Is, is one's a cop? What type of cop is he? How, how dirty is he? And then, um, and if it's like this, thing where the, the, the crook needs to the cop for one thing and the cop needs a crook for one thing and then there's these loyalties that are at play and who knows maybe um, you know maybe they stop being friends because one guy hooked up with his girlfriend back in high school um, and then that comes up at a climatic part where the one guy never really effing forgave him for it um, you know um, you know, I could, I could write a story like that. I mean, again, if it doesn't feel, I mean, I'm looking at it for 17 minutes now, but like, um, uh, but this is the process. I would go into it and I would say, well, and, and, I, and if I was, I would, so first of all, I wouldn't put a ticking, ticking clock on it. I would kind of play with it for a little bit and then I would sit down and set it down and I'd go someplace else. And then when I was in the shower or whatever, it might come to me and go, well, okay, what if, what if this happened with this guy? And then what if that happened? And I would play with it. And then I would get it to a point where, um, you know, I felt like, okay, is this something that's kind of interesting? And then I would pass it around to my feedback circle, say, what do you guys think? Is this, um, you know, uh, I might have them rate it from one to 10. Um, I might just pitch it to them and then look at the response. And if, um, again, I, you know, step one would be me getting to a place like, that I feel like, ooh, I'm really excited. To me right now, what I put together is rudimentary. It's like level six out of 10 as a sort of concepts. Right, um, it's much easier if you start a new script and it's like a level nine concept or a level ten concept, right? Which is unlikely for you know most people to do when they're sitting at looking at something for fifteen minutes. But that's the thing is we you know we don't have fifteen minutes; we have as much time as we want. <laughs> so um, I would just keep going back to the well and playing with it and go, what about this? Or what about that? And then you know if I ever felt a little forced and just put it away and then just just do something else. Um, and then once I got it up to a point where I felt like. Ooh, this is actually really great. And, and also the other thing that I'd be looking for that's really good that I got from Blake Snyder is irony. So where could you add some irony to the story? So two down and out friends, one's a cop, one's a crook. They haven't seen each other in 20 years. They meet on a train. Um, one guy realizes that he's super desperate and he's got a shot at stealing 500,000 bucks and his friend from high school is the perfect accomplice. But yeah. They, you know, one guy slept with this. <laughs> they, they stopped talking 20 years ago because one guy slept with his girlfriend, and um, they got to deal with that. Or maybe that's got to be dealt with up front. And then he goes, "Okay, we'll do it," and that breaks into, sec into your second act. Um, and then, as we go deeper, you know, why did he sleep with the girlfriend? What did they really love about each other um, that was betrayed back then? You know, what, what do they really need as people? Um, and then the movie really becomes about. Uh, you know, I don't know if it comes about a re rebirth, but it comes about them sort of. Because I had deep friendships in high school. I mean, these guys, I love these guys because partly because my father wasn't around as much as I wanted him to be. So I have abandonment stuff. So one way that I dealt with that abandonment stuff was having really tight friendships. So um, uh, my friends and I did not sleep with each other's girlfriends. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's betrayals of different sorts or whatever, but I would sort of tap into that thing and it would probably have to do with some, if I was gonna write this or develop it and I had to use those elements, I would start playing around this idea of abandonment and how I dealt with abandonment and how these guys have dealt with abandonment and what do they do about it. And 
Um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's, that's what I got. I mean, that's sort of my process in you know, looking at it for 20 minutes, um, you know, how I would approach it, why would I, I would approach it that way. Um, and at the level that I got to this, uh, what I will say is, A, this is like I said, <clears throat> I don't know, 60%, 70%, it feels like it's, it's there. If it's what would make this from just being an, an exercise to something like, ooh, this is amazing, I wanna really write this at some point. Probably another element or two. Maybe there's a sense of irony that I could bring into it, or maybe a way to elevate it. Maybe it doesn't take place sort of modern day, but maybe it takes place on the moon or the International Space Station or something, or it takes place in like the 1860s, and I'm in a place where I really want to, you know, explore that sort of thing. Um, uh, but what I'm looking for is that personal connection to it, something that I feel like, yeah. I'm on the planet to do this, you know? And then another thing I would do early on is going, okay, well, what is it like? Okay, it's sort of like Strangers on the Train, but like, you know, I admire stuff about that, but that doesn't really speak to me. Um, now, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, the Peckinpah film from 72 or 73, that blows me away, and that's about friendship and betrayal. So maybe I do that, maybe I go in and go, okay, two friends who haven't seen each other, and maybe it's sort of like with Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, they were, outlaws together and then they were pitted against each other. Um, so maybe I would do that. I would kind of milk what I love from that comparable and I would go, okay, how would Peck and Paul do this? How would this happen? Um, so, um, and again, the key is not forcing it. So I would never put a 20, 20 minute um, or whatever, never put a time limit. I would, I would just get in there and play around and I'd get to the point where if it was fun to keep playing, I would. And if it stopped being fun, I'd just do something else maybe with a different story, maybe whatever. Um, and if I was in a meeting with a producer and they were pitching this idea, it would still be the same thing. It's like, you know, I either can bring uh, something to what this, you know, the guy's vision is for what he wants to do, whether it's an original or an adaptation or something, um, or I can't. And um, I'm not attached to either outcome. You know, because it's, that's the thing, it's because it's, it exists beyond me. It's like I'm not even... It's not me, the more I think it's like me, my screenplay, blah, 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 it's like that just gets in the way. What I'm doing is trying to be in service to the audience that would wanna see this, let's say it's a crime thriller or a heist film, and, um, and if I am the man to serve them with these sort of ideas that just came to me and they're in service, great, you know, and you wanna pay me a lot of money for that, awesome, and, um, and I'm, not, I'm not attached to any of it. But you were able to find things that you emotionally plugged into, even if it was just 60, 70 percent there, like the man with the checkered coat. You were like, eh, yeah, whatever. Abandoned castle. Yeah, I've been to one. It was kind of cool. It was eerie. But it wasn't something that you really felt like maybe a deep connection with. But the two friends yeah. that hadn't seen each other, mm -hmm. that really. Uh, and why is because my personal life my psychology, my psyche was formed around this abandonment issue. My, my dad, took, uh, you know, my parents split when I was in third grade. My dad died when I was 17. So I dealt with abandonment as a core issue um, my whole life. And so I have world-class insights about how to deal with abandonment in good ways and in bad ways and everything in between. So, um, you know, you got abandonment issues, you come to me and I'll, you know, we'll have a good conversation. And my <laughs> stories, um, when they come from that place, now, you know what I mean? Now it's like, it, it makes some sense, right? Um, and I can touch on other things, but like that's, that was a core one for me. So that's why those friendships meant so much to me. Um, and I mean, and it was like, and I would, not only I had a c group of friends in high school, but I had like best friends and we were like this, you know, really, uh, you know, a couple different ones, but like, and it was probably because I was hurting so much because I missed my father. Um, so um, that, for a screenwriter to have that sort of insight into whatever, how your psychology works and how your triggers work can then fuel the choices that you make so they're loaded up. So that you're not just writing, oh, I'm, do -do 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 -do, I'm doing an action film. It's like, yeah, that's that, but it's actually a metaphor for this time in my life where it drove me crazy and broke my heart. And um, because, the movies that we love and the shows that we love are melting our hearts because um, the people creating them are basically sharing their memoirs with us. 
They're sharing their diaries and most intimate, vulnerable places in their life with archetypes or personified in these characters that are iconic in a way so that I look at Goodfellas and I feel like that's my me and my friends and we never did anything with a mob. I grew up on you know, New York, but like way different side of the Long Island. And um, and there was blue collar, there were similarities, but again, like nothing like those guys and yet exactly like those guys. And that's because Scorsese and Pileggi um, were so specific with the people that they grew up with and they allowed that to manifest in a movie like Goodfellas and with such delight and specificity that, um, yeah, it feels like it's my story. <laughs>